Well, welcome to this new tutorial and today we're going to be looking at a really odd problem. It's to do with the CH340 driver on certain boards. Now, so far I've found this issue on some Arduino Unos, some ESP8266D1 Minis and some ESP8266 Node MCUs. But the issue will probably occur with any board that uses a particular type of this chip. Now, before I start, we need to be careful. This is not the genuine chip that has a problem. It's a sort of a copy chip problem. Now, if you're looking at this intro screen, uh, the chip that we're looking at is that one dead center that has CH340G on it. And I'm going to start to show you the problem with these chips. So this is the desktop at the moment, and you can see that I've got two of these boards on here. The CH340 chip is this chip here, just behind the USB. Now this is, if you like, what that some people would call a genuine Arduino. This one actually is a genuine Arduino, uh, one of the few boards I've got that's genuine. Um, and it's got the socketed chip and it has a different USB driver. Now, just because your board comes with a socketed chip, they can still be made in other countries before anybody starts screaming, you know, don't buy Chinese knockoffs. There's nothing wrong with these Chinese boards most of the time. And even with these boards with the problem, it's not the Chinese that are causing the problem. Right, so getting back to the boards. So both connected up at the moment. Let's go onto the desktop and I'm just I've got two blank sketches and I'm going to upload the one sketch. Here we go. Fantastic. Upload straight away. Upload the second one. I get an error. Uh, was it can't set com state for port 11. Now this is where I started to have my issues. So I have upgraded the computer to Windows 11. I've downloaded the Arduino IDE. I've got everything up to date. All my drivers are up to date. You know, fresh install. Can't be any corruption. Suddenly I've got a bad board. Annoying. I was upset. Then of course someone gives me a phone call and they had a problem with a D1 Mini project. So it needed to be a job where you communicated between a couple of these boards using, uh, sorry about all the blue tech on them, using ESP now over Wi-Fi. So I dug out some boards, started plugging them in and uh, getting the setup running. And of these three boards, two didn't work. Now at that point, I was pretty upset because this was one of the boards that didn't work and I'd only had it two weeks it came for Christmas I literally took it out of the packet so at this point I start to get suspicious something is going on and it's a little bit more complicated than I thought so my next job was let's get back to sort of Windows 10 I dug the laptop out plugged all of these different boards in and guess what they all worked so at that point I have a situation where some of the boards are working with Windows 10, with Windows 11. Some of them are not, but all of them work with Windows 10. What on earth can be the problem? So after digging around on the internet, I started to find there was a, a suspected issue with some chips. Now, this is one of my D1 Minis. As you can see, I've zoomed in a bit. And you can see the writing on the chip. Now, this is a D1 Mini that is working. Now, if I look down at this other photo, this is another D1 Mini. This is the one that's not working. You notice there's no writing on the chip. Odd, but again, does that mean, you know, does the writing make any difference? Well, it turns out it does they are slightly different chips 
Now, once I had uh, figured this one out, I then went and took a look at my Arduino Unos. And as I looked at my Arduino Uno, look at that. The chip there has no writing on it, and that is the board that I'm having the problem with. Now, at this point, I'm a little bit baffled because why is it working on Windows 10 and it's not working on Windows 11? So there's obviously nothing wrong with the board, but there is something to do with how Windows 11 interacts with this particular chip. And that's what I then started digging into. And my goodness, it was a bit of a, an interesting journey, but I got a solution, as we shall see. So I went back to my laptop and started to do some digging and I went to the device manager and I checked out the drivers. Now, here we go. Let's open up the, uh, the device manager. We've got the two boards attached and if I right click on them and go to properties, you'll see that the driver is 3.8 0.2023.2 that is definitely the latest driver so why would I have a problem with my drivers well it turns out that the latest driver is a problem if I went back to my Windows 10 laptop the driver on there was 3.5.2019.1 so a driver that was four years older and yet worked perfectly. So then I started to get a little bit suspicious about the whole Windows driver issue and uh, started playing some games with that. So I did some digging around the internet and I found the old drivers and uploaded them and installed them to my computer. And once they had been installed on my computer, I'd installed the 201 driver, 2019 driver. I went to properties and guess what? When I looked at the driver, I've got the 2023 version. How can that happen? I just uploaded the 2019 version. And this is a problem to do with Windows Update. Windows loves to keep your computer up to date not a bad idea you know get the latest drivers um because it doesn't help if the latest driver has a problem with it because every time you try to upload the driver it gets overridden by the latest driver now i'm not a, you know a genius at this sort of thing by any means so i started doing some research on this came up with some people who had some ideas some of it was almost like black magic and witchcraft type stuff I was looking and thinking there's no way I'm going to recommend that sort of digging about and messing about in your computer um, running odd bits and pieces I wanted something if you like that was Microsoft approved now the good news about all this is I have written it all down on the digital town website um, and I'm just going to bring a bit of the website over here because the answer was actually on a Microsoft site that I needed. And if you go down this page, there's a whole uh, explanation of what you do. And the first thing that you've got to do is run this program called SysDM. And what this does, let's just... Uh, do this if we go to run obviously i've already done this um let's just bring that box in where you can see it so you type in uh sys was it sysdm.cpl run that and it brings up this box and when you click on hardware and then device installation settings by default it says yes recommended to automatically downloading manufacturers apps devices you know keeping them automatically updated what you do in now is you click no um, and i know it says it might not work as you're expecting but if all the drivers are working at the moment it's working so 
I click this and then once you've done that you reboot your computer and then you start doing some work in the device manager now I don't need to reboot because I've already done what needed to be done so what you do then do is you go to the device manager go back to the items that you have your problem with and what we do is we update the driver now this is where it gets a bit weird obviously I've already downloaded the latest drivers and I've I've actually put a link on the digital town website to the right drivers so you can install them you can install these before you even start this they're not going to work until you do what we're doing here so here we are looking now at the list of available drivers and the driver that worked on Windows uh, 10 is this version here 3.52019.1 so just click next close and that's it now we've got that driver installed so I've updated the one driver the problem is when you've updated the driver oops sorry let's look at the driver properties so you'll see I've got 2019 on that one but if I now look at the other one it's still got the 2023 so unfortunately I have to update the driver on each one manually uh, which is a bit of a pain uh, I've discovered as I've added new items then I've got to do this but the good news is when we now run the sketch fantastic everything is working and everything's been working on the ESP uh, 8266D1 minis I've had a couple of other people that I've been in touch with that have had exactly the same problem and they've been doing some testing for me and now we've all got boards that we thought were scrap that are now working under Windows 11. So if you get this issue with an Uno uh, with a um, ESP 8266, doesn't matter which board it is, if you've got the problem then the issue is your Windows driver. Now I'm not sure quite how this whole chip problem has come about. I've done a little bit of research. It's obviously the chip is a decent chip in that it works. That doesn't have a problem but it just seems that the latest driver just doesn't like this chip or this chip has something in it that now conflicts with the latest driver. I don't know I'm not going to get into the conspiracy theories I just don't care what is important though is if you've got one of these boards where you look on it and you suddenly see there's no writing on the chip you think you've got a problem the board scrap it's not you can fix it under Windows 11 and all you've got to do is change the driver now every time as I've shown you every time you click on a board and it goes on a new port you may have to update update the driver on that port for people like me sometimes I've got five boards attached at the same time so I'm slowly going through all of my ports but that is the solution and I hope it's helpful for you and you don't finish up throwing uh, boards away or trying to send them back or whatever um, because a lot of people won't even know this problem exists I didn't know it existed until I went to Windows 11 so you learn something new every week. Anyway, hope that's been useful. If it is, please click the like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, if you couldn't follow the instructions quick enough, you can whiz over to the Digital Town website. The link is there in front of you. And uh, yeah, if you go over there, there is the whole list of instructions on how you do this so that you can work through it blow by blow. Bye again.